I'm still wearing the same t-shirt that you saw in the last video because I only have three t-shirts that I like to wear. This week, we've got two exciting projects on deck. I am going to be making the world's softest, coziest, floofiest, most comfortable blanket ever. I'm going to be sewing it and showing you how to do it. It's really easy, even if you've just got basic sewing skills. I'm also going to be knitting a pair of red cabled socks. For whatever reason, I decided I need some red cabled socks. So that's what we're doing. And coincidentally, the red in the socks is going to match my cozy, awesome blanket I'm going to be sewing. So at the end of the week, Hopefully I will have two really cool new projects in the books that kind of match each other. And there's nothing I love more than things that match. So stay tuned, all of that and more coming up. Okay, so here's what we're doing today. I have this blanket. and I'm gonna be sewing a new one. As far as the blanket that I use every day on the couch, I want something that just kind of like fits my current style and fits my house better. So I'm basically just going to be making a new one of these. This is my favorite blanket of all time. It's essentially two big pieces of fabric with like a simple like comforter that you can buy for like 20 bucks from Target, like sandwiched inside. So I'm gonna show you how to make it, but first I have to measure this and then figure out how much fabric to buy. And that is <laughs> my least favorite part of the process because it involves so much math and it's just ugh. So let's measure the blanket and then let's get Dave to help us figure out the math on how much fabric we're buying. I pretty much want it the same size as the existing blanket. It's kind of the perfect size for like curling up on the couch. It folds up well, looks good on the back of the couch. So I'm going to be sewing this the exact same size as my existing blanket. I've taken my measurements. So now I need to figure out how many yards of fabric I need to buy at the fabric store. And this is where, <laughs> this is where I run into problems with sewing. I'm so bad. At math I get so confused numbers just transpose in my head none of it makes sense it is a struggle like a huge struggle so I'm gonna call Dave <laughs> over here to come help me otherwise we'll end up either with way too much fabric or not enough so come here <laughs> I need your help okay let's discuss <laughs> so the blanket has to be 67 inches long and 48 inches wide how many yards of fabric do I need? Brace yourself. We've got 48 inches. If we allow, say, 10% for waste, is that... How much do you waste when you sew? <laughs> I'm not a professional sewer. I'm not... I'm not Let's just call it 10%. Okay. Let's call Sounds it 10%. Good. So 10% of 48 is 4.8. We'll call it 5. Sure. So that's, that's 53 inches. Awesome. <laughs> 67. 10% of that is 6.7. 73 inches. Okay, we're at 73 and 53. 73 and 53 inches, okay, which gives us 3,869 square inches. So now we have to convert that to square yards. So to convert square inches to square yards, you divide by 1,296. Why? Because that's how... <laughs> Where that's did how... you pull that number out of your butt? <laughs> it's a... No, it's a fact. There are 1,296 square inches in every square yard. So the way to remember that, <laughs> for, for, for for math nerds, the way to remember that is... One plus two which equals three, is a fax one, two, nine, six. Like that literally just went in and then, <laughs> oh, I don't remember anything that he I just know. said. Three square yards. So three yards. No, 
Mm. We're not done. <laughs> is you're not covering the area of the blanket once. You're covering the area of the blanket twice. I was Both getting sides. there. I was okay, about to but say. But, but not, we're, we're still not done. To do, so we have to do more math. So we've just determined, write this down, we've just determined we need three square yards. I don't know where my pin is. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Use a pencil. pencil. When you get a yard of fabric, that means you're going to get 36 inches length. Right. And the width you get is just however wide that bolt is. We divide that by, what was that first number? 1296, remember? I don't know. <laughs> 1296. <laughs> So basically what you're saying is we need to wait till we get to the fabric store to see how big the bolt is and then we'll determine how many yards we need to get. Right. Are we, we done with the math for now? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> can you repeat any of that back to me? No! <laughs> no. Shoot, math okay. nerd. Shoot, math. Oh. Now let's talk about something fun. <laughs> that was horrifying. Let's talk about the design. I want to do a quilt design. Obviously I'm not making like a real quilt with like the edging that you have to like hand sew, whatever that edging is called. Oh God, there's a name for it. <laughs> Talking about math killed my brain cells and now I don't know anything. Um, but basically I want a quilt top which is the plain backing and my little comforter sandwiched in between, which will make more sense when I show you how it's done. So the only quilting we have to do is just for the top and it's just sewing straight lines. So I'm sticking with a simple quilt design today since I am not in fact a quilter. <laughs> I don't even have quilting supplies. I'm gonna have to buy like the cutting mat thing and the little um, clear protractor looking things. Um, <laughs> If there are any quilters watching, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I know that you're probably just dying right now. Um, but that's what's so great. Beasley, that's what's so great about crafting is the opportunity to learn a new thing all the time. And so I'm really excited to expand my quilting skills this week with this blanket. So without further ado, that is my design. I'm just doing a simple pennant. Is that a right triangle? What do you call that? I know my freaking dogs have gone absolutely wild. We're just doing simple red and cream right triangles. I'm gonna tell you why I want the red and white. Isn't that great? Like the red and white against that blue, like this particular shade of blue with that red and white, I just think it looks so good. Okay, I've got my fabric for my blanket in the washer. It's washing. Uh, so now I'm going to cast on this week's pair of socks. And I told you I wanted to do red. I really just felt like I needed some red cabled socks and red kind of matches my blanket. So I'm gonna be using Nitpick Stroll. So this is the color buoy. So the plan is to do horseshoe cabled socks. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and work out the pattern that I wanna do and then I'll cast on. It is a zoo around here today. <laughs> we have teenage boys upstairs. We've got a sweet little neighbor kid that came over. We're gonna babysit her for a while downstairs. My daughter has a friend coming over in a few minutes. There's dogs barking. There's teenage boys cussing and playing video games. <laughs> that direction. Uh, I don't know if you can hear the music and the chaos. It's, it's all around. So I'm gonna cast on these socks. I've worked out the pattern. It's just a really cool, classic, horseshoe cable pattern. I feel like these socks are like very like Kennedy family or like people who own sailboats and summer in Martha's Vineyard. Like they just have this classic look. Um, I will have this pattern available. So I will link it in the description below the video if you too want to knit like Kennedy-esque sailboating red cabled socks. 
Anyways, I'm gonna cast on. The whole idea for this sock kind of sparked. I wanted like a classic red cabled sock um, because it was just kind of a timeless, timeless design to me. That's what we're doing this morning. I'm gonna get to knitting because I, I really wanna finish this. I really wanna try and get this done today, at least by today, maybe not by lunch because that's a tall order, heel flap, heel turn, guess it, foot, toes. But I'm gonna try. I'm gonna do some heavy duty knitting so that hopefully by the end of the day, I've got this sock done and I am gonna try to squeeze in some blanket work too. I need to watch some YouTube tutorials to like kind of get my bearings in terms of how I'm going to be cutting these right triangles and then assembling them together. So a lot of work to do today, but I'm really excited about it. Okay, so it's 3.30. Um, I have not finished my sock. <laughs> not even close. Um, I am on the heel flap. I'm, I'm happy. I'm proud that I've made it on the heel flap considering I've gotten so distracted today. <laughs> it's just been one distraction after another. So I was sitting here knitting and working on my sock and I decided, you know, I should try like rock climbing, like indoor <laughs> rock climbing. We have this big indoor rock climbing gym in Tulsa called Climb Tulsa and I drive by it on the highway all the time. And this morning I just had the burning desire like I've got to go right now. I've got to go sign up. I've got to go do this. And so I did, um, even though I'm terrified of heights, <laughs> I decided this was the activity for me. But I was scared. But I loved being there and I did love climbing. So I'm just going to go back every day and keep working up the courage and keep trying. And I feel like it's going to be this amazing moment when I keep getting higher and higher because I'm so scared of heights. So I'm just chasing that moment that I know is going to come if I just keep at it. All that to say, it took up a good portion of my morning. Um, so I haven't knit as much today and I haven't done anything on my blanket yet, like aside from wash the fabric. So tomorrow I have a lot of catching up to do, but this evening I've got a soccer game to go to. So I'm just going to keep knitting this sock and I am really, really going to try to barrel through and finish this sock by the end of the night. That's, it's just going to happen. <laughs> I've said that before and it didn't, but this time it's going to happen. So that's what we're doing. I will check back in later and let you know how my progress has been. All right, it's day four. Did I finish my sock last night? Of course I didn't. <laughs> we have learned by now that I set myself impossible knitting goals, never meet them, and I'm always coming back and saying, yeah, I didn't finish that. So, but I did get really far. We are on the foot. I've got three cable twist to go. I am going to finish it this morning. I am about to like power through some serious knitting because I want to get started on my blanket this afternoon. I have watched several tutorials on how to make half triangle quilting squares, learned what they were called. We're going to finish this sock this morning and then I'm going to get started on the blanket this afternoon. I'm so excited to make these little half triangle squares.
I finished my sock. Uh, today has been a really good day. Not only did I finish my sock, but I also got pretty high for me on the rock climbing wall at the rock climbing wall place, <laughs> which this is huge. I'm terrified of heights, like absolutely terrified of heights. This is not something I thought I could ever do like a year ago, six months ago, three months ago. And today I did it. And I don't know, it just, it feels really amazing to do a hard thing that you didn't think you could do. And it just feels, I don't know, it's a good day. I finished a sock, I climbed, I climbed on a rock wall. We can move on to the blanket. So I'm gonna put this sock in the bath and I'm gonna keep feeling good that I climbed the wall and uh, then we're gonna get started on the blanket. Okay, it is the morning of day five and I have yet to do. <laughs> any quilting. I've just been knitting socks all week, um, but I really want to get this blanket done. I'm very excited about how it's going to look. I just keep getting distracted by sock knitting, but this morning I am ignoring all the socks. Yesterday I finished my red sock. I've got it blocking and then I cast on a new one <laughs> instead of getting started on the quilting. But this morning I was like no sock summer, none. So we're getting started on this quilt today. All right, so I've already kind of started cutting this morning um, because I want to do a test. I'm cutting six and a quarter inch squares in both red and white, and these will theoretically make six and a quarter inch red and white half triangle squares to make up my little quilt blocks. So I've already cut these red ones and I'm about to cut some white ones. I'm just kind of doing a test right now. And then I'm going to sew them together using this really cool trick that I learned on YouTube. My thought is that I will have a row of eight quilt blocks and each quilt block will be six inches. So then I'll get my 48 inches, but I'm gonna get started. I'm gonna go ahead and cut these little red guys or these little white guys, and then I'm gonna add them to my red guys and we'll see if we get a half triangle quilt block. Okay, I have successfully made two right triangle quilt blocks. So very, very excited. Um, I'm going to link the tutorial I used to make these in the description of the video. I'm obviously not gonna show you how to do it because I, I just learned how to do it myself and I don't need to be showing anybody anything. I can show you how to assemble this blanket once this little quilt block top is done because that part's very simple. I've done it a million times, but I'm still very new to like assembling quilt blocks. So I'm just gonna let the expert show you. So I'll link that in the description below the video if this is how you want to make your ultra cozy, floofy, fluffy, comfy couch blanket. I will say you don't have to make a quilt top at all. You can just do a solid sheet of fabric. You could buy two sheets you really liked with a comforter in between to make this. Um, so you don't have to quilt the top if you don't want to. But I am very new to quilting and I must say this was very simple to make. Now where it's going to get interesting, <laughs> I'm sure that my squares are not all going to be the same size and my points probably aren't going to match up perfectly. I'm not after perfection here, I'm after cozy comfort. So it's not gonna bother me too much if my points don't match up and all of that. So I have to make 88 more of these. Um, <laughs> so I'm gonna get busy and keep sewing these, but man, this is going to look awesome. I mean, and you can see it with the blue behind me, right? Like it's so good.
Okay, I don't have all of my half triangle squares done yet, but I keep accumulating stacks of eight. So I actually think I'm going to take a break from the more boring <laughs> part of cutting, bending over cutting, measuring, all of that. And I'm going to start sewing together strips of eight as I finish my stacks of eight. And then I feel like it'll be motivational. I'll see progress. I will see actual strips, like quilt strips being formed. So I've got my first little stack of eight here. I'm gonna go ahead and start sewing that together. just sewn two strips of eight together. Um, there's room for improvement in my quilting. <laughs> my points don't exactly match up. I mean, especially as we get towards this end. <laughs> I'm not worried about the fact that the points aren't perfect. I knew they probably wouldn't be. It takes years to develop skills. It takes a lot of dedicated practice and I do not practice quilting Ever, like at all so it stands to reason that we're not getting perfection the first time around and I'm totally okay with that do love the design and the color it's just a very simple classic design but I think it works really well with my space and I think it's gonna be so cozy so um, I guess I'm gonna keep making more squares and then making more strips and then attaching those strips to this so I have a problem um, shocker I did my math wrong <laughs> I was looking at these finished strips and it looked kind of short and so I laid it on my existing blanket and I was right. I, this is too short. I don't, I honestly don't know what I did. Um, when it comes to math, I can't even go backwards to try and figure out what I did. Um, I just know I'm short. So I need to add more squares, <laughs> which means I have to make more squares um, than the original 88 like I thought. So yeah, got to figure that problem out. Okay, I added in my three additional squares. So now this is the correct width. It is officially 11 half triangle squares across. Okay, I just sewed the fourth strip in and I don't know what is happening, but I have gotten so off. Like, so it's been a rough couple of days. So I woke up Friday and I was ready to attack the day. I was like, I am going to finish the top of this blanket. Um, and things went awry in, you know, in this bottom part of this quilt. You can see that my points are close, but they're not exact. But then I did this row. <laughs> what happened? Look at that. They're like in the middle. Like what happened? And I was so angry when I finished this row because this is a very tedious, time-consuming quilt top, okay? I don't know how I got so far off in my cutting, but something obviously went terribly, terribly wrong and I was furious. You know how it is when you're working on something and it's just not going right. Everything is going wrong. You put all of this work, whether it's knitting or something else, you put a lot of work in, you look at it and realize that you just totally effed it up. <laughs> and then I decided I was gonna wake up today and I was gonna get right back to it. Today has not gone well either. <laughs> I've got ketchup on my shirt that I spilled on myself and I also burnt off an entire chunk of my hair. This morning when I was getting ready, I was round brushing my hair, you know, like with the big round brush and a blow dryer. And I smelled something burning, but I thought it was just like the little engine on my crappy old blow dryer. So I thought, well, I'll just turn it off and give it a rest for a few minutes. So I set it down, walked away, came back a few minutes later, picked up my round brush, and lo and behold, there was a giant 
chunk of smooth, shiny brown hair all wrapped around it. And I was like, what happened? Where did this come from? And so I peeled it off and like the end of the chunk was like totally burnt and singed. So then I panicked and came running into the living room and I was like, oh my God, do I have a bald spot? David, look and see if I have a bald spot. <laughs> he looked and he didn't see a visible, obvious bald spot. But there is definitely somewhere back here, I think, because that's when I smelled the burning. Somewhere back here, there is a chunk of hair about like this long that's like singed on the end. I'm still in a good mood. I'm positive that I can turn this around. And I think that this is a really good lesson for all of us. That when you're new at something, a lot of times you're really bad at it. So if you are new to knitting, and specifically if you're new to sock knitting and you're really bad at it right now and you're getting really frustrated, just give it time. It will get better. Anytime any of us tries to learn something new, we're bad at it, right? I'm just going to get as close to perfect as I can get, at least closer, closer than this. Um. <laughs> okay, I have finished the quilt top. Finally, <laughs> I am ready to assemble this blanket. So yeah, it looks beautiful. I mean, it's not perfect. There are points that don't match up more often than not, but it's the exact thing that I was picturing in my head. I wanted a really graphic, bold, red and white, kind of like nautical feeling quilt blanket for my couch. And this fits the bill. Next, I'm gonna be making the back for the blanket. Um, and that's way easier <laughs> than making this quilted top was. I will show you how to assemble this blanket. It's so stinking easy compared to what I just did <laughs> to assemble this top. Okay, here is my finished blanket top and I've got my backing fabric laid on it. As you can see, it's not quite wide enough. There's a little strip there on the end. I am literally going to cut a little strip of the cream fabric and sew it together to this big strip. So right here on this side of my blanket on the back, there will be a seam running down kind of towards the edge there. And no, that's not perfect. And no, I don't care at this point. <laughs> I just want to be done with this blanket. Okay, blanket is cut to match. I've got my top fabric, I've got my bottom fabric. Now it is time to make the sandwich. So the order goes like this. Okay, comforter on bottom, then you have your bottom fabric right side up, and then your top fabric right side down. Okay, my blanket sandwich is all pinned together and now I'm going to take it over to the sewing machine and just sew around the whole thing. So let's go do that and then we'll be almost done. All right, so I finished sewing together the blanket sandwich and now I am going to trim the edges with my pinking shears. Okay, I've trimmed off the excess and now it's time to turn the blanket sandwich right side out. So we're almost done. We've got our blanket all sandwiched together. We've got the tops and the bottoms with the comforter in between. Then I'm gonna sit down on the couch and we're gonna tie this blanket together. Um, this is the last step. You're kind of hand quilting it, but you're just making little ties. So yeah, almost done, almost there. Okay, so now I'm ready to tie off my quilt. And I'm basically just taking some DMC floss a sharp little embroidery needle and I'm just going to be making little knots in the quilt periodically just to kind of tie it together.
last night I finished the blanket and a couple of days ago I finished the socks and now it's time for me to finally get to show you what they look like. I think both of them turned out so perfect. I mean, obviously there's a lot of imperfections in the blanket, but it's still perfect overall. Very, very happy with how it turned out. And the socks, oh, they are just like this vintage classic preppy style of sock. And I love them so much. And I will have the pattern for those socks, the link to that in the description below the video. Um, and of course I'll have instructions on how to make the floofy fluffy sandwich blanket in the description below the video as well. Now let's take a look at both of these amazing finished objects. that's a wrap on this week thank you so much for joining me and following along as i struggled <laughs> through making this blanket and had a blast knitting the beautiful cabled socks once again you can find the link to that cabled sock pattern in the description below the video if you want to check those out and make some vintage classic preppy cabled socks of your own i'm just so happy with how both the blanket and the socks turned out so Links to all the things in the description below the video. That's where you can find my email if you want to contact me, all my social media information, everything. It's down below. Thank you once again for joining, for leaving comments on my videos. I always love reading through those and I will see you back here next week.